Hello everybody, welcome to the stream today. I didn't have work this week at all because I'm in the middle of switching jobs. Um, I was working as a shot creator at Day for Night and I'm now going to be starting as a mid-level animator at Luma Pictures, working on some super cool VFX projects. So uh, this week was kind of a transition week so I didn't really have a lot of work so I decided to try and chip away at some of the demos you guys have been asking for. So give me one sec, I need to open up some Mayas, but yeah, yeah, Brandon working at Luma. So it's gonna be super cool. They're actually hiring Brandon. If you wanna apply, uh, hit me up in the DMs and I can give you some information, but you should definitely apply because they're looking for a lot of animators right now. I've seen them posting on Twitter and LinkedIn that they're hiring so it'd be cool to be co-workers go from classmates to co-workers that'd be rad but anyway so that's just what's been going on so hopefully I can do some demos without Maya problems for once I'm gonna go over some general like frame rate tips to get better frame rate I'm gonna go over uh, proxy rigs and then maybe do a little animating if we have time before 9.30 or 7.30 PST, and then I'm gonna go into critiques, so. Give me one second. I'm going to also show a sneak peek of the rig because we got first pass rigging on it, so. Open, open. What else can I? Also, if the music is too loud at any point, just let me know. I have it on just because it's nice for me to be able to listen to music while I'm working. But if it's too light, loud for you guys as opposed to Maya, let me know and I can turn it down a little bit. Alrighty, Maya is up. So let's just start with the simple tip. Screen share one. Oh, they're doing some cool stuff. You're gonna have to DM me and let me know what they're doing because that sounds cool. Alrighty, so can you guys see my Maya and can you hear my Maya? I might have to turn it up a little bit. Cool. Can you guys hear that? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm actually going to open up a different file than this one. I was working on this one, but I have one that's in spline, which is going to be a lot easier for you to guys to see the frame rate difference. Okay, cool. Here we go. So... My first tip to get faster frame rate in Maya, which I haven't done the actual, I haven't checked in on the display layer yet, but essentially what I'm doing is 
a really, really easy way to get faster frame rate in Maya is to use render layers, which is kind of the opposite of display layers. So as a display layer, what I could do is I could select everything except for my character. You know, maybe I just, maybe I go to the reference editor, I unreference my character, and then I select all of this. I put it in a display layer. Let's just call this my scene, save it turn that off. Then I can turn my reference back on. No, Brandon, no. I'm left-handed. I like my channel box on the left side. Okay, so as you can see, I just have my character in the scene. And if you look at my little frame rate counter uh, right here, let me just flip this around real quick so you guys can see my shot cam. Okay, cool. And I just moved it. Whoops. Select. Delete and lock. Cool. Okay. So right now I am getting roughly 26, 25 frames per second with my scene turned off. If I turn my scene on, I get roughly 24, 25 7 like there's really not that big of a difference with my scene on or my scene off yeah i am so display layers i found really do not help my frame rate at all and to be quite honest it's a really big pain to try to select everything but your character but what i do use is render layers and the way you get your render layers here is you go to your settings you go to rendering and you just switch it to legacy render layers and then you hit save and you have to close down Maya but then once you open it up you're gonna have render layers right here hey Octavius long time no see it's good to see you around again but so basically what render layers are is you select objects in your Maya viewport and you add them to the render layer and it will only show what you selected as opposed to display layers, it's the opposite. Display layers, you, you select everything you don't want to see and you put them in that layer. Render layers, you select everything you do want to see and put them in that layer, which for me is easier because I only want to see Memnon, right? So I can go to Windows, Outliner, I can see, I can be like, okay, where is Memnon? Here it is. I want Memnon and I want his controls, right? So I want his controls, I want his body. I don't want his clothes because I don't have to see his clothes to animate. So then I just click this button. I add him to a render layer, which I've already done. And boom, here we go. We have just Memnon in my scene. No, no, no scene behind it. So if you can remember, if I turned off my scene and display layers, I was averaging 24 to 28 frames per second, which for somebody who has a slower computer than what I have, that's way less than 24 frames per second. They may be getting 12 to 15. With render layers, everything on, I'm getting, again, 24 to 28. If I isolate just Memnon, I'm immediately getting 40 frames per second. Hello, Animation Addict. So you can immediately see that using render layers and just ice selecting the geometry of the character you're using, it takes you from getting 24 frames a second to 40, which is huge. Yes, he does. So this is why this is something I realized last week. And yes, yeah, so a little, uh, a little, um, backstory on this shot that I'm animating Octavius. Basically, this is a story about uh, a ship's captain who gets killed by one of his sailors and then his ghost comes back from the dead to haunt the guy that killed him so he's got a knife in his neck because that's the way he died so he's technically a ghost right now that's why he's like kind of greenish and i'm gonna make him transparent tra transparent 
once I render it all out and everything. But he's basically a ghost at this point. So he like pulls the knife out of his neck, the knife that killed him. And then he's going to drop down and then he's going to be like talking intimidatingly to the guy that killed him. So it's kind of a fun shot. It's in three different, uh, three different shots, but I'll have to put it all together and show you guys at some point. But yeah, so basically what I'm saying with render layers is it, it'll probably close to double your frame rate, rate just using these. So as I showed before, no render layer. I'm getting 20 to 25 isolating just my character 55 38 40 like way over 24 frames a second so this is a massive massive frame rate saver and so then if you have a laptop or a computer that doesn't have the best graphics this may get you up to 10 frames a second may get you 12 15 it all depends on your computer but if it's not 24 I have a proxy rig method that can actually make you get double what I have here. So let me just reference in. So this is the character. Let me just reference in my proxy rig because I don't have it on this one, unfortunately. Here we go. Let's just re-reference this character real quick and we'll see how much more we can get from a proxy rig than just a normal viewport rig. Okay, here we go. So let me delete the keys on the proxy control that I created. Okay, so if I turn proxy rig on, just in the base layer, which remember we were getting 24 to 28 with just the base character, with the proxy rig, we're actually getting less strangely enough. That's not right. It, I told you guys something was going to mess up. What in the blazes is going on here? Oh, there we go. Now it's working fine. Maybe. Something is messing up here because proxy mode is on, but none of his limbs are showing up. Okay, well, give it a second to process and then let's check this. Okay, so with this rig in, I'm getting 26, 27-ish frames per second. I turn on my proxy rig, I'm getting 30 frames per second. So this is roughly gonna give you five to 10 frames per second, which isn't a lot. But if you think about it, it's the difference between 20 frames a second and 24 frames a second, not having to play blast every few seconds to get that 24 is huge. And so if I go ahead and add this guy to a render layer super quick, Go ahead and add him to a render layer. Then if I do the render layer trick, this should give me, eh, gives me about the same, cool. 30 frames, this gives me 30 frames. So it's roughly the same render layer wise, that's weird. But anyway, the other benefit to having a proxy rig for me isn't so much about the frames because as I showed before, I can have a perfectly high res, high geo character in my computer and still get 24 frames a second as long as I use render layers like this. But for me, the big thing of proxy rigs, yes, it's the speed, but it's also having the ability to turn off the neck and head if I want to. Or let's say I'm really working on the torso motion and I don't want to see my arms. So I can turn off the arms. I can turn off the legs and I can just see this. And for me, that's huge because I have a very specific workflow in that I block out my key poses 
And then when I flip to spline, I turn everything and I just work the torso and the head. And then I turn on the arms and I work on the arms. So for me, proxy rigs are twofold beneficial. I will, I, I hardly, I will try my best never to animate without a proxy rig because I don't want to have to see my arms and legs the whole time, especially when I'm not paying attention to them. So just to summarize, I use render layers to speed up my frameage. If I need more frameage than that, I'll use proxy rig, but frameage or not, I still use proxy legs, rigs to be able to turn an on and off body parts. So that's going to take me to just normal Apollo I'm going to use. And the way that I'm going to create a proxy rig is essentially I'm finding a way to make my computer do less calculations when the body moves. And so what I'm just going to do off to begin with is I'm going to select the geo. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to unlock selected so I can move his geometry over. Okay. So this is the high res geometry. This is what I want to be low res geometry. So how can I make my computer calculate less with this geometry whenever the character moves? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mesh display and I'm going to harden edges. And then I'm going to go to smooth mesh and I'm going to unsmooth mesh. So now that the mesh isn't smooth, that 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 destroys a lot of calculations that your computer has to do. Unlock normals. There we go. So I unlocked my normals. I hardened edges and I'm just going to quickly edit delete by type history. Cool. So now instead of smoothing every face, which is a lot of calculations, it's just normal hard edges, which is immediately going to cut down a quarter of my calculations and give me more frames. The next thing I'm now going to do is I'm going to delete areas of high deformation. So shoulder. Shoulders have a ton of deformations on them. And so that's a lot of high calculation. Elbows, wrists, fingers if you have to. I like to keep my fingers because fingers are in hand posing is important. But torso areas, all of those are very high deformation areas. So I'm just going to delete. Let's go ahead and take a couple areas here. Let's delete. And now I'm going to turn on symmetry just so I don't have to do all this twice. And I'm going to be pretty rough and dirty with it because I really don't care how clean it is, to be honest. Because this is just a demo. If I was doing this for a real Z's one, I'd probably take a little more time. But that's good. Let's just delete this. This area with the belly button is fairly high dense mesh. So I'm probably going to try to delete that, delete, oop, not that. Delete that there. Let's go ahead and delete this section. There we go. Knees are very high deformation areas. Let's delete these. And let's delete ankles. Cool. Okay, so here is our proxy mesh. Very low res. The high deformation areas are not there. But it's still enough that I can see what my character is doing. Now, the other thing that I benefit from deleting faces as I'm now allowed to separate my mesh, which gives me the ability to turn off the right arm, left arm, legs, torso, all of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this geometry. I'm going to zero it out so it's back at its origin and then I'm gonna isolate selected. There we go, so now I can see this guy. And I'm gonna go to mesh, separate. So now all these pieces of geo are all separate. And now I'm gonna drag select them all edit, delete by type, history. So now I'm going to go through and start grouping things together and combining mesh. So this will be right arm. So mesh, combine, mesh, combine, neck and head, mesh, combine, torso, mesh, combine, 
Now we got right leg. And we got left leg. Okay, so now that we have all these, again, select edit history. I'm just going to do R. I'm going to do proxy right arm. I'm going to do proxy L arm. Proxy right leg. Proxy left leg. Proxy torso. Proxy neck, head. Cool. So now I have individual geometry for all the parts that I want to be proxy. Hello, Robert. So now what I can do is I can start wrap deforming these pieces of the geometry to the character to make it follow along. But before I do that, I'm going to just quickly group all these and just call it proxy underscore rig. Okay. So now I have my proxy rig and he follows, he's going to need to follow what this guy does whenever I move the controller. So when I move this, my proxy rig needs to move along. And just so I can do a test, I'm just going to set some keys just so I can get a frame rate, just so I can see what the frame rate is doing. Cool. So right now, I'm roughly getting 24 frames per second but I'm not moving that many keys. So I'm averaging exactly 24 frames per second, a little bit less here and there. The more things I move, the less frames I'm getting, which is good. So I'm just going to keep moving things a little bit. Cool. Still averaging about 24. Cool. But again, if you have a slower PC than I do, it'll be a lot harder to get 24 frames a second with this rig especially when you start moving the face because the face adds a lot like most of my shots that i have it runs around 20 to 19 frames a second apollo does on my machine so i'm now going to place the rig right on top of the geo like i have now i'm going to select both isolate selected so now i have the proxy rig and the geometry both and I'm just going to go to Windows, Outliner, and I have the proxy rig, and I have his normal high-res geometry, which is here. So I'm going to sw quickly switch my hotkeys as well, back to default. Cool. Okay. So now I'm just going to select proxy left leg and body geo, and I'm going to go to deform wrap to form, make sure exclusive bind is on and create. Now I'm just going to do proxy torso, body, 
and hit G to repeat. Proxy right, body, G. Proxy left, body, hit G. Proxy right, body, hit G. Proxy neck, head, body, and hit G. So now, for example, if I hide his body geometry, high res, and I move the rig, everything should be following perfectly now. Everything should be following perfectly. And so if we can now do the test that I did where we were getting barely 24 frames a second or under, now if I hit play, some reason my FPS is getting capped. I'm not sure what's going on here. One second, let me check my settings. Let's just do play every frame. Cool, okay. So now that I have that fixed where it actually shows accurately, let me turn this on, turn this off. Okay, so just the normal rig, if I hit play, I'm roughly getting 23, 24 frames a second. If I hide, turn on, I'm getting 28, 27 frames per second. So again, it's not a huge difference for this, but when you're on slower machines, again, it'll make a massive difference. And you can also tell a difference when moving controls. Like this super fast, super responsive rotations with the other one. If I turn this on, the response time of rotating is much, much, much slower. And it just makes animating in the viewport way, way easier. So let me go ahead and turn this on. Take the body geo. Okay. So now that I have the proxy geometry and the body geometry both following the rig, now how do I get it to where I can turn off different parts of the geometry, turn proxy on, turn proxy off, all those good things that is the main reason I use a proxy rig. Let's go to NURBS, circle. Let's just scale this bad boy up. And let's name this proxy control. I don't want to parent this under the main control just because I don't like doing things to the rig, the base rig. So I'm just going to freeze transformations and then I'm just going to constrain it because I don't need to move this at all. I just want it to follow the route. So I'm just going to animation, constrain, parent, boom. So now if I move the layout control, the proxy control follows with. Cool. So now I'm basically going to use this control to, yes, this can be done in any rig. Any rig you have, you can do this method to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this control to set up a bunch of set driven keys to turn on and off different parts of the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modify, add attribute, and I'm just gonna call this proxy CTRL, proxy control. Maximum, va minimum value of zero, maximum of one. So basically all this is, is zero will be proxy rig off, one will be proxy rig on. So if I hit okay, now I have this value that does not do anything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to key, set driven key, and basically I'm gonna have driver and driven. This is just like parent-child relationship in a constraint. So basically I want the driver, this control, when it turns to one, which would be proxy on, zero would be proxy off. So when I say proxy control on, I want the proxy geo to turn on and the render geo to turn off. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna do, okay, driver, load driver, which will be proxy control, driven, 
will be, let's just start with the proxy rig group that I created. So load driven, and we're gonna do visibility, okay? So on, that means on, I want the geometry to be on. So right now, this is set to one, and the geometry is on, this is what we want, so I'm gonna hit key, boom. That's basically setting a key that says when this is one, geometry turn on. So now I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm gonna go to this geo, and I'm gonna turn it off manually, and I'm gonna hit key, boom. So now, turn on, off, on, and let me just isolate this so I can show easier. So now you can see when this is at one, the geometry's on, when it's at zero, it's off, on, off, on, off. So now all I need to do is I need to make the render geo turn off when it's set to one, turn on when it's at zero, which very easy. We do it the exact same way. The driver proxy control is already on. So I'm going to select the render geometry, body geo, load driven, visibility. So now when this is at one, the geometry needs to be turned off. So I'm going to turn visibility off set a key. Now I'm going to turn this to zero. And now I need to go to the outliner, select body geo, turn this on, and set a key. Boom. So proxy control on, it turns to the proxy geo, proxy control off, we're at render geo. Very simple. So this is the way that you can very easily switch your proxy rig on and off. And now I just need a bunch of subgroups that will allow me to turn on different parts of the body. So let's go ahead and, and this is also nice because most proxy rigs don't have uh, availability of face animation when the proxy rig is on. But I've found with this rig, I can get everything I need with the face on. So if you, if you have a slower computer and you don't want to see the face, you just want to see the body, you can delete this head geo. And then whenever you turn the render geo off, it's not going to be calculating the face controls and it's going to speed up your animation even farther. So again, I don't know why my computer's being weird. I've done this a billion times and it always boosts my frame rate by five to 10 frames. Right now it's saying none, but I can see in the viewport that it's playing faster. So. We're just going to go with it that it's faster because I know that it is. <laughs> so next we're going to make it to where I can turn on a control. So let's go to control, modify, add attribute. This one's going to be called neck head. Again, minimum value of zero, maximum value of one. Okay, boom. So now we want when this turns on, the head controls turn on. When it's off, the head controls turn off and the head geo. Now this will only be working when the proxy control is on because when this is off, you have the render geo. So doing this is only going to turn the controls off. So I'm going to go ahead and select this control, select load driver, neck and head is going to be the driver because that's the control and then the driven is going to be we're just going to start with the geo we're going to drive the geo and the controls so i'm going to select this load driven and i'm going to select visibility right and so if i look at the control it's at one and the geo is turned on so that's what we want so i'm going to hit key now I'm gonna turn neck head. Uh, thank you for the follow, Herschel. Now I'm gonna turn neck head off, which means we want the geo to be turned off now. So turn it off, set key, and boom. When I turn this on and off, the geo turns on and off. Cool. So now we want the same thing to happen with the hair. So load driven, visibility, this is turned on. So set a key. 
neck head turn off so this is off we want the hair to be off turn this off key so now neck head turns the hair and the hair head off now with the eye geometry let me double check i believe there is a group possibly no there is not okay cool but i think quite possibly i can do all of these at the same time to save time let's try load driven cool so i'm just going to do all of these at the exact same time cool so again neck head control turn on the geometry is on so we hit key turn it off we want these to be off so let's turn them all off And you can also tell if there's an active set driven key by the, it being blue. So if this is blue, you know there's an active set driven key going on. So turn that off. Cool, so they're all off. Set key. Now, if I go to the control, so you turn it on, heads on, turn it off, heads off. Now, the only thing I noticed is that these guys right here I need to set these two. So load driven, visibility, visibility. Okay, so again, turn it to one. They're turned on, key, turn it to zero. Now we need them to turn off. So turn off, turn off, key. Cool, we should be good to go. Boom. Turn it on, the head's on, turn it off, the head's off. Now the last thing we need to do is I need to select the, the uh, NURBS curve. And I'm just going to hit the up arrow until I reach the group that has all the facial controls inside of it. Face, rig, group. I believe this is the group we need. Let me try hitting up one more time. Nope, that's not it. Okay. Face rig group, this is the one because this has all the facial controls inside of it. So I'm gonna load driven, visibility, neck head. So this is set to one, we like it, key, turn it to zero. Now I'm just gonna quickly go up until I see face rig group. There it is, turn it off and key. Now we have the, all the facial controls, the eyes, everything turns off when we turn the head off. Now, just for my sake, I like turning these off too. So I hit the group above, neck, neck base mod group, load driven, visibility, hit key, turn it off, turn the visibility off, key. Boom. And the same with this. I'm going to go up a bed. Head mod group. I'm going to load head mod group as driven. Visibility. Key. Turn it off. Go up. Turn it off. Key. And there we go. So now we have neck head. You turn it on, head is on, turn it off, head is off. Again, this only works if proxy is on. If proxy is off, the only thing it's going to do is turn off the eyes and the head controls, which you may want, which is a benefit. But if I wanted to be very um, specific with this and really put in time, I could duplicate the eyes, the eyebrows, the teeth, all of that, make proxy geo of those things and have those turn on when I go to proxy, these turn off when I go to regular. For me, I'm lazy and this works perfectly fine of, I don't need to turn the neck and head off when I'm in 
non-proxy. So switch to proxy, turn the neck head off, the neck head turns off, there you go, you can animate without the head. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this with, let's just say for demoing, cause I'm not gonna demo everything. Add attribute, let's call this right arm. Minimum value of zero, maximum of one, okay. So now first things first, I'm going to load driver, right arm, start with the geo, right arm, load driven, visibility. So it's turned to one, it's on. Is it turned to one? No, it is not. Turn it to one, it's on, hit key, turn it to zero, select the geo, turn it off, hit key. Now we have the right arm, turn it on, geo's on, zero, geo's off, cool. So now I'm just gonna select one of these controls again, hit the up arrow until I get the entire right arm group. Load driven, visibility, it's on one, it's on, key, turn it off, hit, select this, hit the up arrow until I get right arm group, turn it off, hit key. Also, uh, something that I always forget to do is the fingernails. I always forget to do those. I turn these off when I go from high res to proxy mode. So I'm just gonna load driven, visibility, visibility. I'm gonna go here, proxy control. So proxy needs to be off. So we have fingernails and render geo. Key that, switch to proxy mode. Now I need these fingernails and toenails to now be off. Turn them off, key, and we're good to go. So now whenever I turn proxy mode, the fingernails turn off. Perfect. So now back to the right arm. Now I need to do the hand. So if I select one of the controls, hit the up arrow until I get right fingers group. I'm gonna load that as the driven visibility. Go back to driver, right arm. Let's turn the driver on. Key, turn the driver off. Let's go ahead and hit the up arrow till we get back to right hand group, right fingers group, turn it off, key. And there we go. Turn it to one, right arm comes on, turn it to zero, right arm comes off. And you just repeat the process for the left arm, right leg, left leg, all that jazz. It'll make your, it'll make your rig more responsive in the viewport. Again, if I turn this, this way, if I'm translating, you can see the visual lag in the viewport of moving this character. Cause you see, if you watch my mouse, I move my mouse and the rig takes a hot second to catch up to where I move my mouse to. Again, it's not a lot, but I have a $3,000 PC. So it's got RTX graphics card, i9 processor. A lot of people don't have a computer as um, with the specs mine does. So this is a way bigger issue for a lot of other people than it is for me. So if I turn proxy rig on, Boom, you can watch where I'm moving this instantaneous almost. It's way more responsive than it is with the proxy mode off. So I'm gonna quickly open up my proxy rig. Let me find it. Apollo proxy. Is it in this one? Hmm, where did I put the proxy rig? Hold on one second, guys. Open scene. Cool. 
So I'm just going to skip ahead to the final version of the proxy rig that I've created before. And I can show you guys how it works. So here's the proxy rig I had before. Here's the proxy control, just like I have there. And it's at zero, which means it's at high res. I turn it to one. Proxy Geo comes on. This is also a very easy way to get rid of high, uh, high res clothing that takes a lot of calculations from your computer. So this big long trench coat, when I move it around, a lot of deformations, a lot of calculations my computer has to do. The boots, the pants, the hat, all of those I can turn off with just the swipe. Neck and head, on off. Torso, on off. Left arm, on off. Right arm, on off. Left leg, right leg. So if I just wanna focus on the head, I can do that. Oop. Also, give me one second to switch my hotkeys back to the way I had them. There we go, neck, head, torso. So yeah, this is the way that I do all my proxy rigs. Again, the frame rate thing, it worked super well showing you guys the render layers, how I added 20 frames to my scene, 20 frames per second. I do not know why it's acting so weird with the proxy rig, but I promise you guys the proxy rigs do save time. <laughs> and maybe I can open up another scene to show that because I really want to show that real quick one second let me try opening something up this should be the latest Okay, let me try this. Haha, -ha, I found an example. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is an older proxy rig version of mine where I wasn't as clean with the things I turned on and off. So one I just showed you is way better, but it's the same concept. So if you can see here, if I play through, it was saying 12, now it's saying 20, amazing. But I'm getting maybe 20 frames a second. If I turn on my proxy, give it a sec to load up. Also, let me turn off the display layer I had for it. Is it this one? There it is, proxy rig. I'm getting 23, 24 frames a second, as opposed to with it on, I'm getting around 20. So it gives you roughly four yeah, I'm, I'm getting roughly 20, 19 frames per second with the proxy rig turned on. I'm getting 23, 24. So it gives you about four frames per second, which is a lot, especially when you're trying to reach 24. Because anything under 24, your animation will feel tighter than it already is. And you'll end up play blasting and you'll be like, oh, shoot, this is super, super swimming animation and it's going to mess up what you what you think you see. So anyway, hope that helps. Just my 
method for creating a proxy rig, being able to turn off different parts of the body, being able to switch from low res to high res geo, and being able to speed up your frames per second. So hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. And it looks like we're about time for feedback. So let me quickly X out of these. Let me download. I have some files I'm going to go over today for block cycles. And I'm going to go over some blocking, I believe. Also, if you guys have any questions or anything on that real quickly before I move on, if not, give me one second. I need to plug in my tablet because I just realized it's not plugged in. Give me one second. this guy over here that way I can draw cool so let me put this over here let me switch this to three cool and Kane are you around I was going to go over your shot first, so let me just double check and make sure that you're here. Looks like he is. Cool. Okay, cool. Let me switch over here. Let me go ahead and mute the music and... back up all right so let me know if you can hear this because i don't know if i accidentally did the wrong thing nice. can you guys hear that all right Cool. Let me watch the reference. Let me tell you something. I killed more people than you could have had done. I am the angel of death. I am Avalon the Destroyer. I'm a one-man euthanasia clinic. Only with me, you don't have to go to Switzerland. Nice.
I might just personally try to cut out the uh, the last three to four thumps. I, I like the idea of like making it relatively annoying just to show like what the character is feeling. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve might be a little too much. I might do like eight or nine thumps. That way, we, do, we, we have a little bit of breathing time before he starts speaking. That's just one reason. That's just one reason. I might try to get his head a little bit lower here so that he's like peeking under the chest like glaring at you know maybe he's got like angry furrowed eyebrows you know angry boy I'd like to get him like peeking out underneath like he's like he gets on he he's looking off and then he hears it and he like looks over and he's like angry. And then what I would really like to get um, whenever he says, let me tell you something. It'd be really cool if you could get a sharp like head tilt. That's just one reason. When he says, let me tell you something. So he's like looking glaring and he starts to pull it up. And he's like, let me tell you something. Right. And so I could see like his head being here. That should be there. Here, I would get like maybe even more tilted. So he's like, let me tell you something. And you get like this nice head tilt. Um, what I'm kind of thinking of, I don't know if you've ever seen the TV show The Blacklist with James Spader, but he's a very aggressive and uh, imposing character without being aggressive and imposing is the best way I can put it. Is It's like it's very nuanced. But something that always stands out to me about his acting is he always tilting his head. And you can see it even in like if you've ever seen... Um, Avengers Age of Ultron, it's voice acted and mo-capped by the same actor, James Spader. Ultron is such a imposing villain. I would say one of the most imposing villains in the MCU. And what you notice is he always does these nice head tilts. And it's very, very imposing and very, very intimidating when you see the character doing it. And so it would be cool is if he's really trying to be imposing, he's really trying to threaten this kid. If he's like glaring at the character and then he like pulls the thing up and he's like, let me tell you something. Like, I think that could be really cool of getting this nice moment of the head tilt of, let me tell you something. Like, and getting like those angry, like looking over, like maybe he's looking up at it, like, let me tell you something or let me tell you something. Like you can tell so much from a head angle of where you're looking at the character. I would really try to play with that and really push that way. He's not just like staring, like, let me tell you something. Rather, he's like, let me tell you something. Or he could be, let me tell you something, right? Like playing with the head angle, I think would be really important with this character and would be super fun to really show like 
what this character is trying to portray by threatening. Again, I, I think once once you get some eye poses in here, it'll make a big difference as well, because you'll be able to really like show. Let me get this a little bit bigger. you'll really be able to show like where he's looking and like what kind of attitude he has. Right. And eyes is going to sell a lot. So I'd really try to get eyes in there as soon as I can, but uh, let me see. I would also try to speed up this. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I would try to either delay the opening of the box by a few frames or snap it up. Because right now, if he's doing like, let me tell you something, right? I feel like it should be rather quick. Like, let me tell you something. But if you want this slow, like, intimidating raise up, I think it should be like, let me tell you something, right? I think it should be delayed a little bit. Right now it's feeling a little bit, it, it feels like you're trying to hit the opening of the chest on the beat of, let me tell you something, but it's slow that it hits afterwards and it feels like it's just soft. So if you want this like, let me tell you something, like I think it should be delayed a few frames after when you start raising it. Either that, or you might just need to overshoot and settle slightly. That might be it as well as what's sticking out as it being soft, is you maybe just need to, like here, overshoot the chest. Oops. Overshoot the chest. And here, have it settle back down. And that might, that might do it. Like it might, what I'm reacting to might just be the fact that the chest just like goes up and hits a point as opposed to, let me tell you something, right? And it kind of opens and then settles back. I really like the camera back out. I think that works really, really well as opposed to what you had last week. So that that looks really good. But do you, let me see, wait, let me double check uh, the notes. Hold on one second. I forgot to read your notes. Let me double check and see if you had anything specific. Oh, one thing, uh, the rig. I do believe there's a fish rig. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Switch here. I believe Trong CG artist. I believe he has a fish rig. Golden fish, this one. This one's free. I don't know how good it is, but I know there's another one. Ah, the Arowan, Ar Ar Arowana. I know Madison's used this rig before. I don't know how good of a rig it is, but it seems to have at least a decent amount of controls, even though it's a pretty old rig. I think it was made for, yeah, 2012. 
but since it's free, you can at least give it a try as well as the other rig and it might work out for you. Water physics affect how the chest should open. Hmm. For swimming, yes, of like if you have a character and they're swimming in the water, their root motion is going to be almost perfectly linear. Their arms and um, like their um, like the swimming motion, all of that's going to be fairly linear. For something that's grounded on the ground, if he's touching the ground and he's pushing it open, he's going to have more resistance starting to open it and it's gonna take longer to reach the top and close. So to some extent, I think it's going to affect like how, how hard it is to start opening the chest because there's that water force. But once you get it going, the effects, the physics of the water should remain relatively the same of having to overshoot and settle, if that makes sense. Like if he was, if he was swimming, and he tried to open a chest or was holding a chest, it might be much more linear, but because he's on the ground in the chest and he's grounded pushing it open, it shouldn't be that much. It should be like a happy medium between the two of feeling relatively slow, feeling relatively floaty, but still having overshoots and settles and that kind of a thing, if that makes sense. So do you have any other questions on that? Because I like, I like the new ref. I'm sure once you get into it, like, I'm sure this fish is going to be swimming around. And I think that's going to work real well. Yeah, it would be really, really funny if you could, like, make his eyes, like, bulge out whenever he, like, squeezes him. Like, that would be super funny. But... Yeah, do you have any questions or anything on that? There's not a ton else I can think of because, like, the, the blocking is really solid. I think you have a really good grasp on, like, the motion of the octopus and using the different legs and arms and tentacles and things like that. I think that's working all really well. So it's just a couple acting things and just honestly moving to the next, like, moving to the next section and getting blocking in. So do you have any questions or anything else on that? Cool, cool. Yeah, really nice work this week. Also really nice, like, getting stuff out while working on other work animations and stuff like that, because I know that's hard. So, yeah, really nice work. And then next we had a request from... Let me get this switched over. Here we go. Uh... I went over a walk cycle demo last week and they did some revisions and stuff on that. So I will be opening that up in a second. Uh, one thing I did want to go over super quickly for those who have stayed and are watching, I do have an update on our rig. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update, quick sneak peek on what he's going to look like. Switch this, let me turn on textures. So this is our rig so far. He does not have a full facial rig, but he is, I'd say about 70% body rigged. There are certain things that I won't show you that aren't working yet, but we are working on getting them fixed. Um, I think it's in a really good spot so far. We're getting really, really nice deformations on like the elbow, the arm, the bicep interacting with the forearm, the elbows I really, really like. We're getting really nice wrist deformations, the character, the fingers. We've shown updates of the fingers before. They're all working super, super nicely. We're getting really nice finger animation. Rotation. 
rotations in the cog are all working nicely. Translate, stretchy legs. Shoulders are working nicely. We're still working on some blend shapes because we're not quite happy with the way the shoulders are working. One of my favorite things, which I haven't really seen in any rigs that I'm really excited with what our rig is doing, is the rotate Y of the head rotates the neck as well. And I didn't ever think about it before, but I was playing with it and I was like, that's interesting because I was thinking like, when is your neck ever gonna rotate independently of the head in our rotate Y? Like if I wrote here, rotate here, my neck follows with perfectly. My neck is never going to rotate right and my head go left. So like the neck does not do that with a rotate Z or X, but with rotate Y, it rotates exactly with the head, which is perfect in my opinion. And I think for me would save me a ton of time. So just a fun little tidbit that we're adding into the rig. His feet are fully equipped with foot roll side roll, heel pivot, toe pivot. We're working on some other really cool features that we're gonna add in afterwards. Got rotations, translations. We got some toe controls we're gonna add in. Yeah, overall, like I'm super stoked with the way he's working out right now. So I just thought I'd give you guys an update I think we'll probably a couple more weeks and we'll have the body working real well, maybe longer. You know, we're really just trying to get the best product that we can. We're not really rushed by deadline. And then we're going to start in on the face, which is going to be extremely fun because that's kind of our bread and butter is facial acting and facial animation and getting good facial shapes. And I think our character's face is extremely appealing out of the box. So being able to rig him and play with him it's going to be so, so, so cool. Can't wait for all of that and then to be able to release it and see what you guys do with it. So let me see. I need to open up this Polish O2. Cool. So this is the same walk cycle we had last week and just updates based on the demo that I did. And let's see where we're at. So I'm going to turn off this on cool 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 let me check here okay so I'm gonna turn this to 24. Very cool. So it looks like we have nice motion. Okay, what's going on here? This is good. This is good. What you should be having here in the torso is this key should be gone. And these should be the same. So 0.138. 0.138 and then these should both be flipped to linear and we should be good now something's not working here but I can see what you're saying with the feet so let me go ahead and see what's going on so it's working relatively nice from the side but the front view, they're wigging out left and right. So if I'm looking at, if I look at the viewport, you can see that translate X is the left to right. So I'm going to be looking at translate X on the feet. And I'm noticing that there is no translate X on the feet. So what is causing this?
There's no F K I K. Okay. Let me turn off. Ah, something is going on here. Hmm. So for some reason, um, his feet shoot through the floor here. And I'm not sure why. So if I delete this. So right now, if I put his foot at zero, eh, there's still a little bit above. So let's just go here. Point, let's just do point, negative point zero eight. There we go. Negative point zero eight. Boom. And let's just make all of this negative point zero eight. Cool. So the problem I'm seeing here is that the reason why you're having to put the feet through the floor, yes, the TY is what's causing the jerk. And so I'm not a huge fan of the way that this ball is made because there's no stretching of the legs and there is no um, separation. So basically what I mean by that is the the ball that I learned to animate on was Animation Mentors. And basically what would happen is whenever you moved the feet too low, his foot would just separate from the leg. So you could still put the foot where you wanted it, but you would just see separation to know. This, it makes it harder to see when there's separation because it still moves. It's just really, really, uh, you have to way over move it to stretch. So basically what I'm trying to get at if you're having this happen, where the foot is above the ground, it's not an issue of, it's not an issue of the foot needing to go lower. It's an issue of your ball is going too high. Your TY of your cog or your ball is going too high. So if I just grab all of this, right? So this is good, like the down pose, relatively fine. The up pose is way too high. If I lower this, let's go to where it's getting raised off the ground here. If I lower this, ah. now it's touching the ground and I don't have to move my feet. Go to absolute view. Boom. And that is far too flat. So maybe I can lower this a little bit. And then maybe I can copy, paste, and then copy, paste, and then there we go. So maybe on these poses. Okay, this is way, hold on. I can pull these up a little bit. Pull these down a little bit. Just looking at this. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna turn off this leg because it's distracting. 
left leg turn off cool and I'm going to add those to it. Cool. So I want a little more TY because it's very flat right now. But instead of making the rig go higher, I'm going to make the rig go lower. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Now turn this back on. Contact, down, passing, up contact down. So the down poses right now can be relatively lower. Okay. Got your contact, passing, contact, passing, So your contact pose or your passing poses can be higher because the leg is bent and you don't want a bent leg. And then your contact poses, I'm going to place them down a little bit because I want the leg to be straight. So if I turn off the left leg, Oh, there's just so many knee pops with this rig because of the leg. And something I'm going to show just to be helpful so you can see what the curves are going to look like. Give me one second. Because again, walk cycles take a fair amount of time to do and do properly. And I already have a Bali walk cycle that I did that's not perfect, but is in a decent spot. I think I can show you that and it will be helpful. Ah, uh, me. Please don't tell me I deleted it. Please don't tell me I deleted it. Give me one second, I think showing you this walk cycle will be helpful. Courses. Dang it. Did I really delete? There's no way I deleted my class one stuff. Sad. It my it, it's on my old computer. I just don't have it here. Hmm. Do I have it over here? Okay, well, that's not going to work then. Well, I can at least show what I had because those posts are still up. Let me go down. Is there a way to flip this? Yes, there is. Okay, here we go. 
So this is a walk cycle I did a while ago whenever I was learning animation. And so as you can see, you have your contact pose, your down pose, your passing pose, your up pose, and your contact pose. Very minimal translate Y. You have a lot of rotates, but there's really not a ton of TY in the ball, right? It's there still is, like you have your contact here. Why did it flip, sir? Okay. You have your contact here. You have your down. You have your passing. You have your up. And you have your contact. So if I ghost this, can I up the frames? Okay, so if you can see the, the amount of up and down I have in the ball, it's not very much at all. And it's even less than it seems because there's side to side rotation. And I'm just tracking the edge, which is rotating down here and rotating up. If I'm just tracking the pure center of the ball, there's not a ton of TY. It's very, very subtle because if you, again, if you're wanting to exaggerate something, you can make a bunch of TY in the ball, but the problem with this rig is it's going to screw your legs because you cannot stretch the legs. And if you're wanting to do a pushed stylized walk cycle, you're gonna have to stretch or scale or something with the legs because this rig is not gonna allow you to stretch and it makes the leg pop, right? So very minimal translate Y in the body is my suggestion. So taking this, scaling it down, scaling up. And then, so let's see, we got contact, down, up pose. So if you can see from mine, the up pose again, the up pose is very low to the ground, right? And again, there's still relatively minor knee pops in this walk cycle, but I think it's fairly successful for what it is, which is a vanilla walk. And so, again, like I said before, trying to keep the feet as low to the ground at all times is very, very important when animating a walk cycle. So again, here, let me... Where's the motion trail you had? Cool. So we have, well, can I get this to show every frame? There we go. Show frame cross is cool. Also something else I wanted to show, because it takes too long to do it in um, Maya, but let's track the arc. Ah, this is messing up. Let's track the arc of the heel for my guy. There we go. So if I draw a line, the arc of my character, if I'm talking about the heel, this is the arc that his foot makes. It's this up and swoop, right? Which again, this is a forward walking character. This character does not walk forward, so it's a slightly different arc. But let's just say for funsies. Can I select this? Unlock selected. Break connections. Can I move this character forward?
Why can I not move this character forward? Oh, can I? So I can see that it's moving a bit too fast. Still moving a bit too fast. Okay, this is relatively fine. So again, this is also something that I meant to mention last week, but I didn't. Yes, that is correct, Animation Addict. So if you do a perfect walk cycle, you should be able to animate it with no leg stretch, right? If you see here, like this walk, I'm not saying this is a perfect walk cycle, but if you see this walk, this is a vanilla walk, a stereotypical walk cycle and I do not have any leg stretch at all. Zero leg stretch on this walk cycle because my class one mentor said, I'm challenging you guys, if you use leg stretch, you can. It's a very easy cop out to animating a walk cycle. But if you animate a walk cycle correctly, you will not have to use any leg stretch. So I took it on myself. I wanna do it with no leg stretch. So I animated this walk cycle with no leg stretch. But that said, it is impossible to animate a walk cycle, at least in my limited finite skill, with a ton of translate Y without having leg stretch. Because if you look at a human, we barely have any translate Y in our, in our cog. If you watch me walking forward, very, very small translate Y. And it's your, your cog, my hips, if I'm walking, my hips are moving up as high as my foot rotates when I walk. So if I'm walking like this, I'm, my, my heel comes this high off the ground, my hips are gonna be coming up and down this much, not very much at all. So as soon as you make your hips come up this high and you're doing this big bouncy walk, if this motion of your hips is higher than you can go on the tippy toe of your foot, then you're gonna have to use leg stretch. So for example, if I have this ball right here and he wants to go all the way up here, so let's say the difference is this high, right? In order to get this high in a walk cycle, my foot has to be this long, right? Because if my leg is here and I'm standing, so let's say you know it's that long, let's say give or take, Boom. Let's say roughly the same size. He has to be able to get on a tippy toe in order to push his hips that high, right? And so if the TY of your ball is so high that you're not able to get on your tippy toes, then it's not going to work. And if I show some examples super quickly, hold on. I'm sure everybody's used this. Walk cycle reference. Okay, here we go. If you look at this walk cycle reference, right? His foot starts to come off the ground right after the passing pose, right? 
foot starts to come off the ground right after the passing pose or right during. But the height, which is the up pose right here, his foot is barely this much off the ground. Right? He has about this much foot roll. So if you want to gauge how high you should make your TY on a walk cycle, go to your up pose, right? Uh, let me go to my up pose right here. Where's the up pose? Here. And let's do it over here so the foot's working, right? So if I want to know, okay, how high do I put the highest of my ball, right? Well, let's just gauge what this guy does in his reference. Okay, about this much foot roll. So if I go to foot roll and I rotate maybe a little more than this, right? About there. And let's look at his leg. It's relatively straight, okay? So that's about how much TY I need on the height of my up pose, right? And so we can do the same with the down pose. And again, this is going to be relatively different because you're animating a ball with legs instead of a real human. But let's take the down pose, okay? His front foot is perfectly flat, no foot roll, no nothing. And he has a slight back angle on his front foot, right? So if I go to the down pose, which is the lowest the character should be, right? Foot is perfectly flat, right? His leg needs to be slanted slightly backwards, right? Because that's what it shows in the reference. Like if you look at his front leg, it's angled slightly back. So you can either make his stride bigger or you can pull his, you can pull his torso upwards, right? But we get that slight back angle. So this is the down pose. So we get that, and let's just delete these keys. And this should be this should be the up the amount of up and down you get on your walk cycle, right? Down, you get the slight angle. Up, you get the, which would be this up, because let's turn off the left leg because it's not working. You get almost a straight, right? So this is about as much um, translate Y you should have in a vanilla walk cycle. For a personality walk cycle, you're going to need more than that because you're wanting to sell this up and down, but you're going to need to have leg stretch. And so let me quickly linear this. Cool. And again, what I did was I just hardballed the translate of the layout. I personally recommend for new students, animate a character that's walking forward in space because in place walk cycles are very hard to do. And it takes a lot of like feel and know how. And it takes knowing how the curves look in a walk in place walk cycle. Forward walking walk cycle, now I can see what my curve should be looking like. And again, kind of going back to the legs, I need it to look like it's staying as close to the ground as it possibly can the whole time. And also, what I'm also trying to do is I'm trying to do that arc that I showed here, right? Coming up and then swinging down, right? Another thing I can look at from my reference is how much does the foot rotate when it's in the air, right? So right here, it's rotated almost straight up and down if you look at the back of the foot. From that's the most you get of this rotation through the rest of. So like right after it comes off, it's here. And for the rest of the step, it's coming back to flat, right? So if we get the most of the rotation here, then it should be coming back to normal the rest of the way. So let's go to rotation. This is the most. This should be less than that. 
this should be less than that. Cool. So now I can go to my translates. This is your up pose. Let's delete this. Okay, so the translates are doing what I want, but again, there's still too much rotation. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit higher. I'm going to rotate this a little bit higher. I'm going to, there we go. right view wrong one. so now that I have this going forward it should be a lot easier to deal with should be the same oh, negative point zero eight. does not have any translate forwards, does it? Good, no, it does not. Okay, this should not be here, and this should not be here. I'm going to universally translate this down a little bit. Now I'm going to possibly foot roll. Hmm. Having a little bit of foot roll problems here. Down, gone. Good. So now if I quickly try to copy all of this, I don't guarantee that this will work. Let me just turn this off. Translate. Boom. And if you remember what I said before of the reference we had, his foot starts to come off the ground right after the passing pose. Passing pose here, his foot is totally flat. After that, it starts to come up. So if we have passing pose here, well, then his foot should start to come up after that. And so let's just delete this key. Let's move this up a little bit. foot is a little bit low here. I don't know why it's overstretching. It should be at the zero point, same as these.
foot roll. Let's go ahead and have this come slightly having a slight bit of a knee popping issue here. So let's just fix that. So there we go. Relatively, the foot is working. And so if I Copy this. Copy. I turn on the left leg. Why are there no keys? is going on here there we go there it is so if I just paste go here paste Okay, so now that that's working in place, let me delete this last key and turn off the motion trail. There we go. Now the legs are relatively working, right? They're obviously not perfect. We're getting a slight bit of knee popping through here, like you can see like the knee kind of pops here, which again, I could fix through just tweaking ever so slightly. You know, you get the idea. But as you can see, I turned, I toned down the TY of the cog, which again, I'd still need to go in. This is the down pose. This is your passing pose, which would need to be roughly here. This is your contact pose, which would need to be more here. up pose, which would need to be here. And now if you look at it, which was what I was gonna go into, the passing pose, the leg is bent, which you could fix with the TY, or you could fix with the TX, or you could fix with the rotate X, right? And so again, based on the reference, if we're going off the reference, which you should, the contact or the passing pose has a relatively straight leg, not perfectly straight, but relatively straight. And the foot is not off the ground. And then the up pose, the foot is rotated off the ground slightly, <clears throat> which should dictate where your TY of the hips should be. So if we want to make this more straight, I would do it more in the also, this is not working. Hold on one second. Negative point three. Oh, hold on, I need to switch this. There we go, cool. Maybe that fixed it. I was dumb and I copied it over and I didn't do the thing. Cool. 
So maybe I should now foot roll. Why did I make foot roll come up? Wait, am I on? Well, that fixed it. So there you go. So in hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of I kind of played around a little bit, but my first recommendation, looking at your work after this week again, make the walk cycle go forward, and do it by translating the ball forwards, right? Start with, um, I'm wondering if there's a tutorial. Because whenever I watch it, what super helped me was watching the Pratt Bros tutorial on the AM campus. I do not know if the Pratt Bros have done it on their Twitch stream. I would check and see. But, um, also this contact pose needs to be Higher up, down, contact, up. But yeah, um, again, use reference. Like I shown here, this will tell you a lot of how you do your walk cycle. Track the arcs of his feet. Watch how they cut the ankle. Watch how the arc works, just like I was talking about here. Watch the arc of the ankle swinging through. Tone down how much TY the hips have, how much it goes down, how much it goes up. Be mindful of where the legs are on this pose. Whenever you hit the down pose, which would be here, making sure there's that slight back angle on this bone. Making sure your passing pose is relatively straight, not perfectly, but relatively. That's the what the reference said. Your foot is as close to the ground at all times. Low rotations, very low rotations. Because again, if you if I was watching what you had, yours was more like super high rotations here, which is why there was so much strain on this back leg and making it hyperextend. Make sure you get your rotations on the ball, going down and down, and rotating also in rotate Y. Is there rotate Y on this? There is some, cool. But then also making sure that this works because this isn't working correctly. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly do this. Times equals negative one, do that. Boom. Copy, paste. And then if we're looking at rotations, again, the rotations of a walk cycle should be the same motion as the side to side just offset. Rotate, which is good. This is the peak. You rotate, which is good. We just need to copy this, to paste it here, and then times equals negative one. Because this is it. Negative three point five is positive. Let's delete that. Plus six, negative six, and this is it. Four point seven five plus four point seven five. And 
and then we should be able to copy paste 10 feet goes to negative one. wrote the translations start coming too soon I'm seeing I paste this so right now he starts translating screen left too soon so I'm just gonna take this entire curve I'm going to offset it by one frame immediately that feels better maybe I can take offset one more frame no that's too much What's the popping coming in? There's a pop going on here because this isn't right. This isn't right. there okay there's something wrong here I'm just trying to make sure that this cycles properly and right now it's not so if we look at the you know what, let's just set a key here okay so if we reset the rotate Z right the biggest rotation like I said last week will be on the up pose right so if I just rotate on the up pose and then I go to the next up pose which will be here I believe here up pose up pose is that where I have it no one more frame okay so if I go to the up pose here rotate it the opposite way and so right here we have let's just do 5.8, negative 5.8, I should say, and positive 5.8. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We should again have negative 5.8. So 12 frames, 12 frames, and then... Again, we can copy this, paste it, and then take the peak and the peak, drag it back. Now we should have a properly cycling rotate Z. And then now we can set it to where we favor. So right here, it's here. I wanna favor this a little bit to where it hits and then swings through. So maybe we get a curve more like that. So I can copy, copy these, go here, and then I can copy this again. Oop. Copy this, paste it here, and then go times equals negative one, and that'll work. Copy, paste, boom. And I think there's a little too much times equals 0.7, too much side to side. I think that's better. And there's a popping in the TY and I don't, it's not right. Let's get rid of this right now.
if I want to, I can even down this would be my up pose or passing I should say passing So again, there's still some knee popping that I would have to work out, nitpicky knee popping that I'd have to be working out. But hopefully hopefully this is a little more clear this week than it was last week of like what, what you should do moving forward for the walk cycle. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, this is not a perfect walk cycle. I'm just kind of working with this rig and with what I started out with. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Again, this is not a perfect walk cycle either, but it's the closest thing I have on hand to a good walk cycle that I could show. And I would try to reference other good walk cycles that people do, looking at people on YouTube, looking at things on Vimeo, of just like what good walk cycles with a ball is, and try to relatively copy what they do, because a vanilla walk cycle is a vanilla walk cycle. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. There's really not a variance. With other animation, there is. So if you copy someone's acting shot, you're copying their creative choices. If you copy someone's vanilla walk cycle, there aren't really any creative choices with a vanilla walk cycle. They should all look relatively the same. You're also not trying to use vanilla walk cycles to get a job. You're just trying to learn. So finding other good walk cycles and looking at them, see what made these walk cycles look good. What makes these ones not look good? What makes it work? What doesn't, right? And being able to do that and watch and see what the good walk cycles do, what the bad ones don't, or what the bad ones do and what the good ones don't, all that stuff, it's going to help you a lot. And hopefully, you know, being able to see this helps you some. Again, this is not a perfect walk cycle. What I did, I'm doing it very, very quickly. But hopefully you're able to see that lessening the TY makes the legs a whole lot more manageable because as soon as you move, make the TY more, right, then your feet start to go up above the ground and then you have a whole lot of issues. So, and again, what I would probably do because I prefer more TY than this is I would lengthen my strides, which gets into a whole lot more. But if your stride is out here, if your foot placement's out here, then you can translate your ball farther down like this and you have more ty so if you see like let's talk about like contacts right your contact is about here if i was making a walk cycle i would probably have the contact here and i would have the feet more like this right farther foot placements is gonna give you more room to have more up and down, right? So that's what you can kind of see here is like, if you look at my contact, the feet aren't, are a little more far apart than yours are. And that allowed me to have a little more translate why. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If not, unless anybody wants some last second feedback, I think I'll probably call it here. I've been going for about two, a little over two hours. So thank you guys for showing up and giving, uh, showing me your work. Let me take a look at it. Watching my demo on proxy rigs. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll try to have some more demos in the future of like things that I do use that make animating easier, faster. But if nobody else has any questions, I will probably call it for tonight. Thank you guys for showing up.
and I will see you guys next week. Also, tune in for the Saturday stream. It's going to be an acting Q&A with Madison, Ayer, and Catherine. Really, really amazing actors and actresses who've been working in feature film. I unfortunately won't be there. I'm going to be out of town, but I'm definitely going to be watching when I get back. It's going to be an amazing stream, so tune in for that. What should you animate next? Have you can you can you give me a rundown of what you've animated so far? Animation addict. I know you're doing a walk cycle right now, but have you done anything before that? Any exercises? And while you're answering, I guess I'll go ahead and answer. Okay, so my suggestion of what you should animate is follow this website. Animators Island, great animation exercise to master, 51. Bouncing ball, in place loop. Simple bouncing ball across the screen. Okay, cool. So I what I would do is if I were you, follow this list. Bouncing ball in place, a step-by-step -step guide right here on how to animate a ball in place, right? Ball bounces across the screen. A brick falling from a shelf onto the ground. Simple character head turn. Character head turn with anticipation. Character blinking. Character thinking. Tougher than it sounds. Flower sack waving. Flower sack jumping, falling. Level two exercises. Character in emotion, happy, sad, angry, etc. Jumping over a gap, standing up from a chair, walk cycle. Character on a pogo stick, laughing, sneezing, reaching for an object. I would suggest going for these. I don't know if you've done the level one exercises, but I would suggest doing those two just because you may not need them, but they can always make you better. So for example, I started out in class one of Animation Mentor and I didn't know anything. And I did class one and I learned a ton. And had I skipped to class two, I wouldn't have learned those things and I would have really struggled. There was a guy that went through Animation Mentor around the same time as I did he was already a really, really good animator before he took AM, but he still took class one. Even though he didn't need it, he still took class one. And the reason was because he wanted to master the basics before he went on. And because of that, while I was struggling to get the basics working, he was mastering his basics. So then when we got to class two, I was struggling trying to get a walk cycle to work. He was mastering a walk cycle. And then by the time we got to the end of class six, he was doing amazing animations. And so even if you don't need the level one exercises, maybe you have experience before of doing those, do them again and try to master them. Try to make them amazing, perfect. Because then while you're mastering those, then when you move on to these, you won't have to try as hard with certain aspects of those animations. So... That would be my uh, suggestion. Just follow the level one, two, three exercises. Keep going down to level four. And then once you finish those, then maybe we can come up with a game plan of where to go from there. But hopefully that helps. Definitely follow the 51 exercises. So, And with that, if you don't have any more questions, nobody else has questions. Thank you guys for showing up. Show up to the Saturday Q&A. And I will see you guys next week.